go back and add that because I wasn't recording. So if I go to structure, content types, you can see that I've already created a slide content type. Um, so it's very basic. It just has a uh, an image field, and that's what's going to house our different slide images. And now, if I go back to um, a more effective way of setting up your slideshow is to use a gallery. In this case, there will be only one piece of content, but it'll use multiple images within that piece of content. Um, so if you go back to uh, the settings for your, let's see for your image field down here see the number of values is one so this field can only hold one value ie one image but if I wanted to use a gallery content type instead I can just change the number of values that it uh, can hold for example I can make it five so each gallery can hold up to five images um, or unlimited uh, in this case, you'll want to make sure that you turn off this setting under your, under your views, which is displaying all values in the same row. Um, when this is turned off, the, uh, each, of the, each image within the field will be displayed in its own row, and rows are how uh, views spit out the different pieces of content that are being displayed by the view. So if you're going to do it this way, make sure that you turn that off. Um, another way of doing this, and this is probably the best way, but you can only do it if you're using Drupal 7, is to use a field collection. Um, for this, you're going to also need to install and enable uh, field collection and entity, AP entity API. Um, so you can create a content type that uses a slides field collection, and it's the same basic, content, basic concept as uh, the gallery in that you just make it so that the field can take multiple values but then you associate it with a field collection and the field collection can have multiple fields so it can have a slide but then each slide can also have a title for example or a caption and so you go to your go to structure and go to views and add a new view and as you can see you can create either a page for your view or a block um, in this case we want to we're going to want to create a block and I'll go back to my that environment and show that. So as you can see, this slideshow is set up to take um, that slide content type. So under fields, it just has a field for a slide. And you can preview it here. And as you can see, it just takes each piece of content that you've created and it just cycles through the slides automatically. Um, you, there's under, under your settings, you can also control how long it stays on each slide and what type of transition it does, whether it fades in or out or switches directly. And uh, let's see. So you, all you have to do is when you create your view is change the format to slideshow and add your fields, um, such as your image field. And another thing you might want to consider, and this is built into Drupal 7, is to use an image style. And what an image style is, is just uh, you can specify a specific type of way of displaying images. So if you have images of different sizes, you can use something like scale or scale and crop to make them all one size. Um, if you look at my slideshow, I applied an image style, uh, so all these images would be the same size. As you can see, it kind of cut off parts of each image, but it looks much more uniform. And when you're theming and creating your site, you want the slideshow to only take up a certain amount of space. Um, and actually, I'll show you. I also set up a slideshow using a field collection. So. If you're going to use a field collection, which is probably the best way of setting it up if you're on Drupal 7, uh, you have to create a relationship to the field collection field. So here I created a relationship to the field collection field slides, which is the field in my gallery. 
and then it's the same basic process. You just uh, add that field to your fields over here. Um, and the, this is some extra functionality that's built right into View Slideshow. Um, there are three different kinds of widgets that you can add to your slideshow to have a little bit more user interaction. Um, so we have controls, pagers, and slide counters. Um, controls are, as the name suggests, different ways of controlling the, what the slideshow is doing. So by enabling controls, you can add a play pause button, and it also adds a next and previous button. Um, the default setting is text, but if you are knowledgeable in CSS, you can hide that text and add your own custom images for your controls. Um, a pager is, uh, creates an element for each piece of content in the view, and it uses one of your view's fields to handle this. So here are a few examples of different pagers. Um, this is just a generic one that I took from uh, the Flex Slider website. As you can see, there's four little dots down here, and each of those dots represents a different slide in the slideshow. Um, and it shows which slide you're currently on. And if you want to go to another slide, you simply hover over another dot or, in some cases, click on it, depending how you set it up. Um, you can also create a numbered pager using global view result counter. Uh, so like I mentioned earlier, the pager uses fields. So you can add a field to your view, um, a global field. And what this does is it basically just spits out a number for each slide. Uh, um, and then you can hover over that number and it'll go to that specific slide. So I'll show you how to do that on this slideshow. Um, you just go to your settings. And as you can see, these are your widgets. And you can either have them on top of your slideshow or below your slideshow. Um, so first I'm going to set up a field to use global view result counter. And make sure that you exclude this from your display or else it'll display the number along with each slide. But we only want it to be output in the pager, or I mean, yeah, pager. And then if we go to our slideshow settings, and we turn on our pager, um, pager type fields, and so the field we're going to use is global view result counter. And as you can see now, there's a number for each slide. And if I hover over the number, it changes the slide. OK, so here's an example from one of the sites uh, we've been developing at KWall that uses a pager. Uh, and we use some custom CSS to move the pager over to the right side over here. And theming for, the, for which page is actively being viewed. Um, Here's another pager that uses a different type of field. This one uses another image field that's just a thumbnail image style of the slideshow image. So as you can see down here, there's a thumbnail for each slide. And here's the actual slide. And what you'll notice with this slideshow is that it's not just a slide image. You can also, using CSS, overlay other fields onto your slideshow. So if your slide has text, maybe in your body field of your content type, you can just use CSS to overlay it on top of your image. And as you'll notice, too, with this slideshow, there's also controls. So you can use a combination of controls and pagers to get the desired effect of how you want your user to be able to interact with the slideshow. Um, there's also another widget, slide counters. Um, this one you can't really interact with, but it just lets the user know what slide you're currently on and how many slides there are in total. So if you turn it on, it'll just display text uh, to show which slide is currently displayed, like slide two of four. And now, uh, for theming your slideshow, here are a few ideas. Um, you might want to separate your slideshow from the rest of the content on your page by adding a frame or a shadow. 
Um, overlaying elements, like I mentioned earlier about uh, putting multiple fields on top of each other, uh, you'll need to use a position declaration and also z-index to make sure that uh, certain fields are on top of other ones. Um, and most of your theming is probably going to be in your controls and pagers. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, you can use custom icons um, and you can hide the text and use a background image instead if you have arrows or pause and play buttons. Um, so get creative. Views and view slideshows are very flexible and there's a lot of applications to it beyond just what you think a basic slideshow is. Um, and we have, I have a few examples from sites that we've been developing. Uh, so here, this is a site, Fresh Bennies, that sells, it's not really insurance, but it sells benefits that are similar to insurance. Anyway, this tout view, which shows the different services they offer, is actually a slideshow. So as I hover over the icon for each kind of uh, service, all this text down here is actually in a slide. Um, let's see what else. This one's a little bit more complicated. In this case, we use uh, um, this module maxi menu, which allows you to embed blocks within uh, your menu items. And so if I scroll over uh, events, this is actually a slideshow too, and these different options are it's a pager, and so as I hover over uh, the different options, it displays the slide over here. What's interesting about that is that it's actually a common slideshow, so um, each of the menu items is pulling the first, the latest article of, uh, associated with, with these items and that's displaying all the rights. So. Here's another, yeah. Maxi slideshow? Maxi menu. Maxi menu. Um, here's another one, and this one, you, uh, this is a pager over here on the right, so as you hover over each of these, um, it displays the slide on the left. Um, this used some CSS to overlay the, uh, the text, and also uh, we added an additional div and put a background and opacity on it, so that's this black box that makes the text easier to read. So, uh, like I said, there's a lot of different applications you can use your slideshows for, so get creative. Um, here's some more cool slideshow related modules and other uh, functionality that you might want to check out. Um, like Aaron mentioned, with, uh, with that mode shift site, you can use different features in Drupal to control which kinds of slides are displayed. Um, for example, a basic thing you could do is if you want to only show featured slides, you can add a field to your content type, a Boolean field, and just call it featured. And if you go to your view, um, you just add another filter criteria that says, oh, if it's featured, then display it, and if it's not featured, then don't display it. So that field, would that be a checkbox? Content. Yeah. 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 Actually, if I show, because I. Yeah. See, so as you can see with my slide content type, I added a Boolean field featured, and the widget is like you said, it's just a check uh, check box. And so, and uh, like you said, in Drupal 6, it's an integer, but in Drupal 7, you can actually specify what the on value and off values should be. So I just use on and off. Um, and then, so if you go to your view, um, you just add another filter criteria. Feature.
featured and make it so that the, uh, the slide has to be featured in order to display. And since none of my cat slides are featured, it should display absolutely nothing. All right. Um, and you can also use taxonomy terms to categorize your slides and galleries. Um, so, it'll, uh, so you can pull like the first slide of each taxonomy term type, uh, like we did in Mode Shift. Um, here's some other modules that you might want to check out uh, if you're into responsive and Web 2.0 stuff. Um, you can use a flex slider, which uses another jQuery library that can integrate with Views Slideshow. Um, so it's just another way of setting up your slideshow. Uh, to be responsive. And here's the example on their site. See if I resize the window, it resizes the image accordingly. Um, you might also want to check out jCarousel, which is a responsive uh, jQuery plugin that uses uh, carousel navigation. So it's similar to a slideshow. The setup is a little bit different, and the controls are on either side of it. Um, so there's a standalone module for it, and then there's also a module that integrates with Views Slideshow. Um, an, an example of that, um, a site we did for U of A, this is a jCarousel Slideshow. So once again, this uses some custom CSS to have both an image to the left and then also overlay some text and a title. And as you can see, it wraps around, so when it reaches the last slide, it just uh, goes back to the beginning. So when you load those libraries, um, those additional carousel libraries, whatever, um, when you go to the edit view, those options then come up in the type, right? Uh, yeah. You can still, so if you add uh, like a carousel library, well, that option will be available. In the edit yeah. View. And uh, for this example, like for View Slideshow, there's a few different libraries you can use as far as how it actually goes from slide to slide. Um, I used View Slideshow Cycle, which is just the traditional, just goes from view to uh, slide to slide. But there's a, a few other ones too. Um, if you look, there's links on the uh, View Slideshow module page, uh, other related modules that integrate with it. So, yeah, there's a few different ways that you can change up the functionality of how your slideshow works. And that's it. Any questions? Um, in order to input the text on the right side, the text to the image, mm -hmm. what do you put the CSS code? Um, the view? Well, the nice thing about views is that it generates all the HTML for you, and you can also make uh, you can also set it so that it generates certain classes. Um, so. Go back to here. And so if I inspect my slideshow, uh, I guess I can't inspect it with this. Oh, there we go. So if, we, if you look here, um, so it creates, uh, if Unless you're using a table, it'll create a row for each of your slides. Um, so that's this right here, class views row. And then it also creates classes for each uh, field in your view. Um, so you can theme off of that. So if you have text, you can theme on views field body. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, you can use positioning to kind of overlay it if you want it on top of your text. Um, so for example, this. Uh, see, it's been, it's been positioned so that uh, that this field will appear on top of it, and if I take that off, then it's moved below the actual slide. So, Uh, 
Uh, what probably happened is it probably changed the classes. And so if you had themed on a specific class and then you, uh, you added the slideshow like you said, it probably put a different name on each of those divs so you're, it wasn't triggering your CSS. So, yeah. Yes? Yeah, and you can you can use that to add your own. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, for ex yeah, for this slideshow, uh, we rewrote the output of the of this text. We added an extra div, and the the class on that was just overlay. And so then we can use that to create this uh, kind of black background thing. Inside. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. You mentioned that the source of predefined pagers. I missed the source of predefined pagers. Uh, so if you if you just go to your actually uh, go back to those slides. So a pager has to use a field. Um, like if you look under. So here under pager type, it's fields. Um, and then whatever fields you have in your view, um, you can pick one of those. And it'll just create that element for each slide in your slideshow. So for example, if I were to use uh, the title for my pager, It would just create, it would just list the title of each slide as a pager. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? What? Where did I put my slides? Oh, the my my presentation slideshow. Uh, I recorded them, so I'll make sure they're available to you guys afterward.